Hi everyone. I'm back. I'm actually in a good mood today because I'm getting my own apartment. I'm getting my own apartment. I found a sweet little old lady who is going to rent to me, even with that assistance. So, awesome. Anyway, today we're going to make rosemary mint soap. Seems to be a fan fave. It's a very strong scent. And the oils I'm using are rosemary from Brambleberry essential oil and spearmint essential oil also from Brambleberry. Brambleberry. We're going to be adding goat milk powder, some colloidal oats, and some kale and clay. So I've got my hair pulled back already. I'm going to fix this camera. Now let's get to making some soap. First things first, we need to weigh out our oils, our solid oils, so we can get them melting. So I'm just going to add them in my pan here. And I'm going to use a double boiler. Get the scale over here. Move these out of the way. And turn this on and tear it out. And I forgot to print my recipe. Alright, got my recipe. I'm going to glove up here. And actually, first things first, we're going to do our live water because it needs to cool down. So, let me get my picture up here on the scale for the line. And this is my uh, one of my more expensive recipes, so I'm not going to give it out exactly, but I've got babassu oil in this, cocoa butter, shea butter olive oil, castor oil, and sunflower oil. All right, so I need 19 ounces of water. And I'm soaking at a 33% um, water to oil. I do not recommend that you do it this way unless you're a very experienced soaker and you're not worried about overage. Because if you go over, you have to throw it all the way or increase your oils and go through all those calculations and what a pain. Alright, so we're getting close here. stirred up. This is a great little picture for measuring your lye as long as you don't have too big of a water, you know, too big of a batch. It's heat resistant. It's a milk frothing picture is what it is, but the outside gets very, very hot, so be really careful when you use it. Use the handle. 
And this is getting fumy, so I'm moving it back away from me. And you want to make sure you get all the granules stirred in. Everything dissolved. And that feels pretty good to me. So we're going to put this up out of the way. Because I'm notorious for spilling shit. Yeah, we'll sit this over on the right. And I got light water on my glove. So I'm going to wash this off. Okay. All right. Now we're measuring our oils and the need some potassium. I got my most of my oils this round from Sober's Choice. They had really good prices. The shipping is a lot, but. are great quality and about the cheapest you're going to get for bulk so I'm doing about eight ounces of babasu roughly um, babasu oil is really good for the hair and the skin a little too much, a little too little, and just right. And I can't remember what all properties it has. I did write it down and I don't know where my notes are. But you can do research on it. It's used in more hair products than it is skin, but I need to get rid of it before it goes bad. Next is coconut oil. I bought all these oils at the beginning of the year thinking I was going to start picking up business, but then I rebranded and I moved around so much that it didn't happen. And then I am suffering from severe depression, so I don't feel like doing this most of the time. I am doing a tall and skinny version of this today, which is what I'm going to stick with from now on. I'm also changing the colors. Last time I did it in white with tan, sort of, um, in a gradient pour. This time, I'm going to do a version of the tall and skinny shimmy. As long as everything works out okay and if I remember correctly I didn't have any real acceleration or any problems with this these essential oils which is uncommon actually for essential oils they're notorious for speeding up trace okay cocoa butter and shea butter Oh, 
was trying to make this. Okay, pardon that interruption. I had to dig out my butters. So we're going to tear this out again. And here I have my shea butter. I also got this one so precious place. I love it. It's an unrefined. You can tell I'm not on a level playing field here. Unrefined, so it's a little brown. Whoa, come on, work with me here. Oh my word. Take a little bit of that out. A little more. There we go. And these guys have a way longer shelf life than liquid oils do, thank God. Because I got a lot left. And tear this out. Now we'll do our cocoa butter. I get it in a solid chunk from Silver's Choice. And I just leave it in the chunk, which I probably shouldn't. Should probably break it up, be easier. But it's a pain in the ass to chop it up too. Come on, what is going on? It's a scale. All right, perfect. Now that is all of our solid oils, so we're going to get those to melt them down. And then we'll be back. So the good oils. These measured up. Get these burning down. So we need the castor oil first off. Where are you? Is it? Oh, it is. I do olive oil. Start with the olive oil here. Oops, way over. Oh, that's perfect. And the sunflower oil is next. I have no idea where it went. Which is not really cool right now. Found it. All right. 
totally got way too much of this stuff. I ordered from both Apothecary and I think it came in units, not single. <laughs> they got like six jugs. Uh, castor oil now. You don't want to use too much castor oil because it can make you feel sticky. Um, I usually use between 5 and 7 percent in the soap. We are super fatting at 5 percent and the castor oil is also at 5 percent. So that's all our liquid oils. What I'm going to do is go ahead and mix in all my additives. So, get the little scoopers out here. So we're going to need two tablespoons of goat milk. And I do heaping. Alright, so there's goat milk powder. And then two tablespoons of royal oats. And these little scoops I got off of Amazon, they are tablespoons. One, two, and two tablespoons of kale and clay. I love kale and clay in my soaps. I think it really does help with the scent. Um, I had it in this soap, and this soap was very, very strong. Another soap I made with it blended right in the batter, or right in the essential oil. I think it was the dish soap I did. Um, it's, you can smell it much better because when I did testing on it, it didn't survive. It's a chronification. So, let's get this scale out of the way now. You don't need it. Okay, all those are melted now. Or not melted. Jeez, I words, words. Those are all blended in. I did use my own floidal oats for this, so there is a few little lumps in there, and that's okay. I'm still gonna do some more blending. So I'm gonna actually leave that in there. And We'll do some film with the oil melting down.
Alright guys, we're back. Although my mood has changed due to the fact that somebody has my laser thermometer. And I am not happy about that. And I think I know who did it, but I can't prove it until later. So, we are guessing at the temperature. They feel pretty cooled off. I put the lye in the freezer to cool it off. And we're going to go ahead and get our lye blended in here. Hope you guys can see okay. I'm trying to film on the camera or the phone now. Hopefully it's auto-focusing. Alright, so we're going to blend. Hopefully it will not accelerate too much. And I only want it to accelerate to uh, emulsion, which we are at, because of the design I'm doing, I need it as liquid as possible. So, I'll go ahead and lay that down there. Get all these tools out of the way. And we're going to go mix our black colors. Put this to the side. And our fragrance oil. So I'm just going to mix these with a little bit of water. Get them mixed in evenly. So first off we have Lime Appeal by Nurture Soap. All of these are from Nurture Soap today. I'm going to do one teaspoon of each. Second we have Emerald Green, Emerald Green. By nurture. And last but not least, Alpine Green from Nurture. Now I was going to mix in some titanium dioxide, but I do not see it anywhere on my shelf or near me. Which means it is away somewhere that I can't find it. So we're not going to be doing that today. Alright, let me put about two teaspoons of water in here. A little bit more than that. We'll try one since that overflowed. This one needs two. Get these blended. These are lovely greens, I think. And definitely better than white for a rosemary soap and mint, which are both green plants. Make sure we get all of it off the bottom. Forgot I'm out of frame. There's that one. And last but not least, the emerald. A lot of that ended up on 
the side here, so we're gonna have to definitely do some scraping. Over batch. Into three parts. I'm not measuring this, just guessing. scraper bowl here get all that soap butter out of there you can smell the oats really strongly Makes a nice scent with the chocolate. All right, I'll put this off to the side. Now we'll get to putting the colors in here. I might have to add more, but we'll see what the greens come out like. So, I can't wait to get in my new digs. I have a lovely counter that I'll be able to work on. It also has shelving that I can dry my soaps on and store a bunch of stuff. So, I'm excited about that. It's not the best apartment in the world, but hey, it's something. It's free to me. Alright, let's blend these colors up here. funky things before it saponifies. Try not to stick one too much. Don't want it thickening up on me any sooner than it's gonna. Alright. So we are done with the stick blender now. I've got soap splattered everywhere. Let's wipe that up here. See, let me move the table. All right, we're gonna get out the mold and we're gonna measure the fragrance oil. So we're doing one ounce of each of these oils because essential oils have a way different usage rate. They tend to be about 1% for most of them. All right. 
It's a little bit over an ounce. I have up to 1.8 ounces. I'm doing 1.4. And if you haven't watched my other videos, stick trick is so the oils don't run down the side of the bottle and ruin your labels. All right, so we're going to divide this up. Actually, I'm going to put it in one, see how it does. Because I'm already getting thick here. Not too bad. So I think we'll be okay. Go ahead and dump that out. So, like I said, I'm doing the tall and skinny shimmy. The modified version of it, anyway. This is what was coming out of me. That's not good. A little more careful there. frame again sorry guys Ugh. I knew these pictures were too full I should have kept some out just kept it natural since I can't find my TD it's hard to end it in good when it's full like this some of it keeps coming out the top Oh, back. Okay. Most likely be doing some more blending anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and prop up this mold. I need it a little higher than that. And what we do, we're going to pour a little soap here down the wall of the mold. And a little soap on this side down the wall of the mold. And I think I did too much there, but that's all right. I don't think it's going to be a dip. It's just going to be a tall and skinny shimmy. It's not working out the way I wanted it, so we'll just go with what's working here. And once again, I am a messy soaper. I haven't quite got that knack like Katie Carson from Loyalty Soaps, but she's been making soap. Well, actually, she's been making it as long as I have, 10 years. Oops, wrong color. It's starting to thicken up now. That alpine green is really thickening on me. I'm trying to do about four passes. Start this up a bit. See if I can get a little looser. Okay, that helped. So give me your comments below. If you've ever done this kind of pour, how it worked for you. 
if you want to come back and cut it if you like it or okay, we need to drop this down a little bit now it's getting kind of oops still not high enough We'd still get the same concept. I think it's going to look fab. All the colors are going to be separated, but together. under there. So I can still do a little bit more. I'm in more of the alpine green than I am this one. So obviously I didn't do it even. And this one. And that's too full again. to use these on top somehow. So I'm not getting an even distribution. There we go. Almost out here. So the last little bits that we can do before we have to let it set up the tad to do the top. And that's about all she wrote there. Alright, so we'll let this set up. Touch, I think I can go ahead and do this one. Dump it on the side. Messy, messy, messy. Okay, so there's that one. This is going to be troublesome. I have a lot of batter left. I'm probably going to have to put it in a mold. I am. Way, may, way too much oil. So let's get out the sample molds here. It's always good to have samples. So I'm gonna make a whole tray of them. Absolutely did. Uh, we 
can move this out of the way before I ruin it. Scrape all this extra into the side. Now we can take the excess off. Oh. more on the table than I do my cup. It's alright. And now we'll just make a I'll use this one put the excess in. This will be for me. Way too much. Way, way, way too much oil. It says it holds 56 ounces. I don't understand why. That's exactly what I made. But we'll just go with the flow here. Boy, I got a mess to clean up. Putting last of this oil in here, I need the soap to set up a little bit before I do the next part. Designing the top. Oh, geez, many Christmas. I am just spilling soap everywhere. take my mold here, move it out of the way. I have a big mess to clean up, but oh well. Um, I'm going to find a spoon. Somewhere. I don't want the tiny one. That's all I got left, so we're gonna have to dig this one out, wipe it off. Let's see if we can do anything yet. I'm not gonna have a very fancy top, just. swirls pulled towards the middle which I keep messing up so we're gonna let it sit up a little bit longer Give a chance to get hard and then we'll do our swirls in the meantime, I need to find a rug.
where we're at here. Call this good. And that's it. It actually ruined the mold top, so we're still going to have to wait. So it's still not holding. It's actually over the liner. I need to quit playing with it and just let it get hard. And then do the rest. So now it's just a waiting game. All my colors got blended, so it didn't do like I wanted, that's for sure. So I'll bring it back after this hardens a bit. We are back to cut the soap. I took it out of the mold already because, yeah, it is super soft. As you can see, I have dents everywhere. And I needed it to air dry a bit. And I cut that part out of the video because it was a lot of cussing. If you look at my flowers, you can see how they deformed when I pulled them out of the mold. That's how soft it is. So, another thing is I'm really disappointed in the colors. And you'll see why in a minute. So let's get to cutting here. Well, I guess it's not that bad. The end color was really bad. I'll show you the end piece. Yeah, that looks horrible. This one looks okay. It's going to need some definite loving to it, as you can see how soft it is. And I cut my bars at an inch and a quarter just because I like them super thick, thicker than a one inch anyway. So this bar, I'm definitely going to have to do a bigger water discount for this soap. Oh, that one's nice. Because of the softness, I don't know if it was because of the essential oils or what, but I know I used a bigger water discount last time and it wasn't this soft. I've been working with 33% and that seems to be too much, so I'm going to cut it down some more next time I do this bar anyway. Come on, you cheap ass cutter. Don't ever buy a cutter from Walmart. Yes, I got it from Walmart online. They don't have them in the store. It works, but sometimes it gets stuck down here where it's supposed to go through. I'm gonna have to do some definite trimming. But all in all, not too shabby. Ooh. Smells excellent. These uh, essential oils hold their scent very, very well. The last rosemary mint soap I did still smells great. And that was months ago. So this is a definite win. 
even messed up my top getting it out of the mold look at that isn't that horrible this last piece i'll show you more look at all that <laughs> trying to get it out of the mold it's all deformed Well, that is Rosemary Mint.